Lee Sizemore. He began the story as a punk, at least. That's how it seemed. He was ahead of narrative and he was very excited to reveal his new narrative. Odyssey on Red River. No. Sorry? No, I don't think so. Since Lee was upset, he went on sick leave, and as most people do, he spent his sick leave hammered by a pool. Teresa told him to hurry up and get back to work since Ford's changes had been causing problems, and after Teresa left, Mr. Sizemore noticed someone new. His attempt to hit on her failed, so he grabbed the bottle, went back inside, and took a wee-wee onto the map as a way of marking his territory. I am declaring that this park is my stage, and I shall do with it what I please. That's when Lee found out who Charlotte Hale really was. Hale was there to force Ford into retirement, a bold move. As a contingency plan, Hale uploaded the guest data into Peter Abernathy and told Lee to give him a semblance of a personality and in order to leave the park by train. So Lee did that. Meanwhile, Ford's new story began to unfold. I call it Journey into Night. Afterwards, Lee went to cold storage to finally send off Peter Abernathy, but... Peter was no longer there. None of the hosts were there because Ford's final story had begun. Earlier, Ford had told Lee to create a villain for his new narrative, but it turns out that had just been busy work, a way to assure that Lee didn't mess up Ford's final story. Ironically, when Journey Into Night kicked off, Lee's new villain turned on him. The gold miner was about to eat Lee, but Maeve Millie showed up just in time to save his life. This was the beginning of their relationship. At first, Lee was very confused when Maeve asked him to help her find her daughter, and not long after, he tried to out her to one of the security guards. Nevertheless, Maeve needed him, so she gave him a second chance. After they found Hector at the nearest bar, Lee noticed that Maeve and Hector were holding hands, and this bothered him. You two were designed to be alone. But as they traveled together, Lee saw more and more signs of their humanity. In order to get to her daughter, they traveled through Shogun World. While they were there, Maeve grew attached to her doppelganger. So, instead of leaving, Maeve chose to risk her own life to help Akane get back her daughter. But I say we ditch Akane and make a run for Snow Lake. Why should, why should we all get killed over a literal sex machine? You can't keep doing this to us, giving us people to love and then getting upset when we do. After they left Shogun World, Lee successfully navigated their way to Maeve's old ranch and she thanked him. Thank you. Unfortunately, there was a misunderstanding between Maeve and the Ghost Nation that led to a fight, and Lee got scared. He finally broke and decided to call for help using a phone that he had found much earlier in Shogun World. We have to help them. What the fuck are you doing? Lee's facial expression here says it all. He felt as if he had betrayed her, and he had. When the help arrived, they nearly killed her. This was a major turning point in his arc because... Lee finally knew for sure that he cared about her. These next five clips speak to that. Don't, 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 don't. She's not like the rest. We need her. I, I took it easy. Uh, Just hang on. Uh, hang on, okay? Just hang on. No more corpses up here. Take her to cold storage. She doesn't belong down there. You can't let her die. You deserve your daughter. Meanwhile, Ford had chosen to help her out as well. A virtual Ford overrode Maeve's programming so as to give her back her admin powers. Maeve then used other hosts to save her life and heal her. So Lee was the reason why Maeve nearly died in the first place, but he was also partially the reason that she survived. And when Lee went back out with her posse the second time, he did it by choice. As a reminder, Lee had once had a lover named Isabella, and so did Hector. That was Hector's backstory. In other words, Lee had designed Hector to be the man whom Lee Sizemore himself had always wanted to be. And in the end, Lee got the opportunity to become that man. Well, let this be a lesson. Go, go, go. Get it to safety. Although Maeve was eventually killed, Lee Sizemore's sacrifice allowed Maeve to get to the door and hold off the infected host long enough for her daughter to escape into the valley beyond. So, in his own way, Lee helped Maeve rescue her daughter. Later on, Sorok placed Maeve into a virtual construct in an attempt to find out the encryption key to the Forge data. In this virtual construct, Maeve had been given a new name. 
Isabella, the name of Hector's former lover, also the name of Lee's former lover. And lo and behold, Lee Sizemore was there as well. Lee's programming had him bring Maeve to the forge in an attempt to find out the encryption key for Sirach. But when Lee kissed her, Maeve realized that he wasn't real. Maeve knew this because Lee hadn't helped her because he desired her or because he had wanted anything in return. Lee had helped her simply because it was the right thing to do. Lee Sizemore died a good man. Well, all I can say to that is... You're my fucking ass!